Dragonfly here. I uh, I'm gonna do a little series on the tarot cards I have. Basically, doing a flip through of my tarot decks and oracle decks. What I've been doing recently is um, taking a few days to work with some of my decks and um, basically doing a tarot interview and trying to get um, a little tarot notebook together on just my decks, some, the spreads that I might find online or spreads that I might like, and tarot interviews and kind of getting those all into one little book. And I thought since I'm doing this, I might as well do like a flip through of my decks. Now, a lot of my decks are pretty common. They're already out there. Um, and I'm not so much worried about that. I thought it would just be kind of fun to have, just have the kind of a playlist of of my decks on my channel so and since this is my channel and it's what I like to do here it is so the this deck is the lost tarot of Nostradamus let's see if I can get that in there and it is by John Matthews and Will Kingen published by Tuttle it's a nice, good, in-depth book. It gives some of the history of Nostradamus. Um, it talks about the cards. Each card has its own page with um, interpretation, a little bit of story behind it, keywords, and all that good stuff. And it's really a, a pretty decent book. And I've been looking at a bunch of the videos out there on YouTube in regards to this deck, kind of seeing what's out there and what people are saying and whatnot. Um, this deck was super cheap for me. I have not had it very long. I haven't worked with it that much other than to do this week's um, weekly spread and um, to do my, excuse me, my um, deck interview spread with it. My deck interview basically, um, stated that this is a the type of deck that uh, likes to strip things down and kind of get right to the point. And I can't really disagree with that right now. The and, and like I said, I haven't worked with it that much just to do those couple of spreads. I don't know that I could really do a lot of readings with this deck. I do have a hard time sometimes with interpretations and intuitive readings. I do like the book for that. Um, but it's not convenient to try to do a spread and look up every card and things like that. This book is very different than the Rider Waite. It has um, some symbolism that I am not familiar with. I am familiar with Nostradamus and being a seer and making a bunch of prophecies and such, but um, that's about the extent of it. I really haven't studied that much. What I do think would be great with this book is perhaps um, doing some um, daily draws and really kind of um, journaling with this book, either based on what I see in the card itself um, based on the little description in the book, uh, just to really, really get to know this deck. I really think that this deck really will take some time to get to know. And again, I am have limited tarot experience, but from what I can see on a lot of the um, other videos, that is the case with many people. Just trying to straighten out my wrinkles, but it's not working for me. Anyway, so I'm just going to do a little flip through of the cards. I thought about having it, the Rider Weight deck next to it just for comparison sake, but I really don't think that is needed. Uh, I think I might link a couple of the videos that I watched that I kind of liked with it. There's a couple of um, 
I have really good ones that are a little more informative, but not many of the videos of the other videos on YouTube actually went through every single card. So I am going to try to do that now. And I'm going to start with the majors. And I'll go into the minors. And then kind of go from there. So we have first the Fool, the Magician, and you can see on these cards they have the arch. Um, I really think it's really pretty. Down here they have um, a little uh, phrase that um, allegedly was written by Nostradamus. And that interpretation is in the book so that you can read it a little clearer. What I like about these cards, not only is there, you know, a little bit different than the Rider Waite, but there's some layers of things inside each card that, you know, I think are really worth exploring. The Pappas. The Empress. The Emperor, the Hero Font, the Lovers. Now, this Lovers, it's very interesting in that there's a scale here as well. So like I said, it really, I really think this will take some time getting used to and just kind of really reviewing what the deck has. I like this card for the justice. Look at the leg. So not only can justice be beautiful, such as with the flower, but justice can be rough and a quick slice and you're embodied. Anyway, I didn't read the, <laughs> the page, so I don't know if that's really what it means, but that's what I see there. The swift action of justice, the swift knife. Okay. Fortune's wheel. Fortitude. Now... Okay, so in Fortitude, I had to look at this card. Now, this is Strength, which, you know, I get. But this picture here, this is a horse. I didn't get that. I didn't see that that was a horse. But in the book, it clearly states it is a horse. The Hanged Man. Death. Temperance. The Burning Tower, the Star, the Moon, the Hermit, the Devil, the Sun, Judgment, The completed world. Now, for the next, for the minors, I'm going to go a little bit faster. And I'm just going to flip through each card and not really announce what they are. I will stop at each suit, though. So, this is the suit of suns, which, according to the booklet, is equal to wands. And you'll see the sun. And it has a different arch than the majors. Now we are at 
the suit of moons, which is equal to cups. And you kind of see that with some of the cards. Again, the arch has changed with the moon at the top. And I do like this here, and you'll see that changes through the rest of the cards too. Now we have the suit of the stars, which is equal to the swords. Now we have the suit of the spheres, which is equal to the pentacle. These suits have some geometrical patterns in the background. The book doesn't discuss those, but I'm sure you can read into them what you would like. Or if the book does discuss them, I did not see that in there. And again, I haven't read the whole book nor worked with the deck completely. Here at the back of the cards. So that is a complete flip through. The cards are beautiful. I really think that um, the cards don't get enough credit um, for being tarot cards. Now, as with Nostradamus, there's a lot of doubt in the community um, what he may have had to say or where these cards actually came from. Um, but if you look at artistic or creative decks, I mean, it's really a beautiful deck. I, like I said, for me at this point, it's going to be more of a meditation or a journaling type of card. The cards are really thick. Um, I don't care for shuffling cards like that, but um, once I get to know this deck, I think I'll uh, I'll find a lot more use for it. I I really do think that it's worth worth a try. And the deck right now is like six bucks on Amazon. I mean, you really can't go wrong. So. Anyway, that is Lost Tarot of Notre Thomas. Thanks for watching and have a great day.